So into Solomon. Um, all of the straight jacket went to Boa, which is definitely a good thing. I was or almost all of it. Uh, or maybe all of it, yeah, I think all of it. Uh, I was able to try the low fis on that have that, and it's really good. I like it better with the bow than the pole lace. It's it just is better. Oh, so instead of having instead of having that pole lace on the side, side for the straight jacket on the inside, now it's a boa, which and makes sense just, because so yeah. many other companies are doing it with boa, yeah. and it it just locks you in so much. Yeah, better. it's just better. Um, Huck knife pro. Which I've gotten good feedback on, but basically same story with the other pro stuff. Like it's just fancier base, fancier core. Blah, oh, so blah. it's like when they were doing their classics version and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pro. It's yeah, pro is essentially replacing classics okay. in, in their lines. Um, I don't think people quite understood the classics thing. The marketing behind it didn't so make a ton pro of sense. makes more sense. Pro makes more sense. Gotcha. Uh, they added a new board called the six piece. Um, I have no fucking clue why, because they already have too many twin mid flex boards in their lineup. But here's another one. This one comes with crab grabs, though. Oh. Ooh. Already built in? Uh, no. Oh. It just comes with some skate rails that match the base color. whoopee dee doo But, yeah, they just have too many mid-flex twins in their line. They, right. Like, well, Solomon's lost right now. They have no clue what they're doing. Uh, HPS expanded. So there's now a, an HPS Osmo. Not the actual Osmo, but that's what they're calling this one. I think it's a little confusing, but... It's basically a shape that mimics the Osmo, but it's a regular snowboard. So when okay. you see that, it's so not an Osmo. So you can actually mount bindings on it. Yes. It's not a power surf. It's a regular snowboard. It has no 3D shaping to it. It just has the same pro, like silhouette. It has the same silhouette as the Osmo. The Osmo has a graphic tie-in to the Solomon stuff, but it's still $1,200 Osmo. Totally separate from Solomon. Okay. It's just that it's wool okay. Um And then you have the standard HPS. Uh, that's still in the line. That's essentially Vole and Takana Kai's collab pro model. Okay. And there's also an, another HPS. They really need to clear this up. This doesn't make any sense. It And also, the to the first HPS Osmo comes in one size. comes in a 57. Then the next HPS that only also comes in one size comes in a 59. Uh, and it's... Basically, like a freestyle pow deck, so it has some tapered directional shape to it, but it looks like a regular snowboard, so it's not doesn't scream at you that it's a power board. Uh, then there's regular HPS, which does come in two sizes, and then the classic stuff beyond there. Um, that's still in the line. They're still making their three piece split board. No clue why. I, I haven't heard good things. No, I haven't either. I don't I don't think it makes any sense. Like I tied it into S Lab on like the ski side and the rest of the side, it makes sense that it's this premium ultra compound, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Uh Dennis um, Split. Dennis Split, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Women's line looks good. Nothing really to speak of there. Um Bindings, Quantum's still in the line for some weird reason. Uh they renamed the Defender to the Highlander. And, Can there be only one? And there is a new strap on those guys where it has that kind of, that honeycomb strap before, but it had foam filled in. Okay. Now the foam's gone. Okay. So now it's just that plastic skeleton. Um, yeah, Highlander, there can only be one. Uh, hologram didn't change. There's a now District HPS. So it's the District, but it adds the strap that's on Hologram and up. Okay. So it's a fancier strap District. Uh, Alibi Pro gets that same strap to it so basically same binding but gets the updated on that strap for the fancier strap uh women's didn't change basically all the same and then that's that's that, solomon uh, yeah. well, that was super easy i know now after solomon since we're on ski companies yeah if we head over to head mm -hmm. uh, head over to head yeah uh they got a new boot called the eight you can see that on page 11 Basically, they just give numbers to their boots, is what I've realized. And then they just kind of, just when a new model comes out, it's like, this is number eight. Well, who is number one? You are number six. What the fuck? Uh, you know, uh, they've got a new technology called Light LYT. I assume it's the same, from what I've read, it's like the same thing, like what Light Rail is with Rosnall. It's just That's a, my it, guess, it's yeah. It's just a dampening. But the weird thing is, they were putting it in their boots. So I was like, hmm. That is weird. Yeah. 
They've super, got some interesting shapes. They do. And the they, day it looks like a great shape. Well, uh, they're like kind the of power surfing yeah. board. So and the, then there's the Kizamu light, and that board yep. looks like my kind of snowboard. Depending that, on so the camera profile. The, that so that's on. what I was going to go into. So the Kazumu light is on page 20, and you look at this thing, and you're like, holy shit, I yeah. want to ride that. The only thing that scares me, and I wish they would put camera profile pictures on the boards themselves, because one of their camera profiles is terrible. Um <laughs> It because it's flat between the feet and then it cambers up. Oh god! And then it comes back down, but the down doesn't engage. So when you load a foot, you're disengaging two thirds of the board. Oh when you my load one foot, god. it oh uh, yeah. so it's so it's so, so not good. And yeah, so there's the Kazumu light. There's okay. So hybrid camber pop, which is the Kizumu, is flat between the feet. And then cambers down outside. Ugh. So well, no, camber two point Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So well, a lifted flat zone oh, into, so a a down flat camber. into a camber. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So good things because I mean, some of the stuff that had has like some of their tech that they use is actually good. And because I've written a few of their things, and they have some good things going for them, they just yeah. they just try to do too much because they're a ski brand. Right. Um, so after the Cosmo, the next new board is the Anything Light, which is pretty much like a it seems like it's a board for progressing on that's a little softer flexing then you got the daymaker light which is the their hybrid camber construction playfulness of rocker with the board controller camber it's got a narrower waist to it and it, it which the hybrid camber dct and i assume even dct2 i haven't ridden that one obviously yeah. but the regular dct that's the scary profile i was talking about that's kind of so, what i figured and then you got that. the next new model which is the true on page 23 mm -hmm. directional twin for rookies so it's a progressive progression all mountain freestyle board uh then you've got the uh everything light which is what are they what do they call it? it's like it's kind of like a do it all, jack of all knife trades for everyone, but it's like one of those boards you can just go on autopilot, or so they say in there. Yeah, except um, it's got the terrible camera profile on it. Yeah. Uh, then there's. <laughs> so it's a knot. You're going to die. Yeah. 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 So then after that is the shine light. And I don't know. It, like I just feel like they've got a lot of overlap when I start reading their marketing spiels. Like, I, know. I need to ride their stuff. Yeah. I think. Um, then oh. for women's, there's the Pride, which is a, it's just straight camber. So I'm like, yeah, well, there you go, and it goes all the way up to a 57. That's big. But the waist on the 57 is 24.6. Ooh. So, and it's got an 8.4 side cut, so I'm like, that's really narrow. Yeah, that is really narrow. But um, then when you get into the bindings, they've got <sighs> yeah, two new bindings. What the hell is that? What, their bindings? Well, just the high back. What is going on? It's a new technology that allows you to drive into it, so it's the Flexmaster 3000. That's because... <laughs> Like, <laughs> oh, the marketing dude had fun with that. <laughs> oh, totally. Like, Flexmaster 3000. Why does that not have a late 80s, early 90s graphic on it? I don't know. But they, so they've got two new bindings. There's the NX6 binding and the NX Fade 2 binding, which is the women's binding. You can see those on page 30 and 31. Basically, the NX6 and the, uh, NX Fade 2 binding are their higher end women's bindings with the Flexmaster 3000. Yeah, and they do the 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 face hugger. Yep. Thing where they open up all the way. And they're very tall on top of your board. Yeah. yeah and their the, boots look like rhino boots, all of them. All of them. I was just going to say that they've got two new boots, the Four Boa women's and the uh, Galore light boot which has their light technology, but when you look at their boots, you just sort of scream, these are rental death traps, to yeah. get them the fuck away from me. Um, you know, sometimes you just gotta ask yourself, would Corey Haim wear it? <laughs> so, 
But yeah, you look at their boots, and I mean, they just they don't look that good. No. Like, that eight boa, it's weird because it's got two power straps on it, and uh, yeah. And then let's see, the next company would be Unica, yeah, which is the Canadian niche. We've tried working with these people in the past. They kind of blew it. Um, Which is so strange to me because, granted, Niche is out of Utah, but, like, apparently they're big in Canada. So it's weird for there to be a Canadian Niche when Niche is already big in Canada. I don't get it. Uh, what are you going to do, right? Yep. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. So, I don't know. There's, there's, It's just one of these little brands that I feel like we kind of have to talk about, but... They probably won't be here in three years. I'd be surprised if they're here next year. <laughs> but yeah, they basically have four new models, which are just renames of their old ones, and they built on them. Uh, the boards are made at GP87 in China, so they are good boards, or at least they were made in there. Um, so the first one is the Genesis, page 6-7. I mean, you want to talk about a really puke green base... Like their gra their graphics are fucking atrocious. That's not good. Yeah, like the like, I swear to God, like we made snowboards. Oh God, we need graphics. Like, uh, I don't like know. none of them. They just none look them are like very good. fucking garbage. But yes, yeah, so there's four new models: the Genesis Evergreen, the uh, what the fuck is it? The the Elias and the Chief. That's pretty much everything. For that, I want to leave it on that. Yeah. Um, sorry we couldn't get a Burton catalog to really dive into it. Kevin knows a little bit, but we just didn't do it. Also, this is a really long podcast. We've just hit three hours. Dope. Or around there, close to three hours. It's it's two in the morning, and we're tired, and we promised you guys that we would do this. So we're going to end it at this. We will have the regular podcast back here in a couple weeks probably about like another week or two we'll film film and record that for you guys so if yeah. you're listening to us that's awesome you can find us on stitcher podbean uh google play i think now we're finally on itunes again i don't know they haven't sent me a deconfirmation that they didn't like us otherwise you can watch these segments on youtube if you're new here just remember to subscribe Click the bell on YouTube, get the notifications, subscribe on Podbean, subscribe on Stitcher, do whatever, download us, you can find us there. If you really want to support us, swing over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. I promise you that we do have early reviews of all the 2020 product over there. And as always, we're your hosts, Kevin Hub and Avery Lefebvre. We'll see you guys in another video, or you'll hear us on another podcast. That's right.